South Korea's government has threatened to arrest thousands of striking doctors if they don't return to work by the end of Thursday. It also says it will suspend their medical licenses. The doctors have been protesting against the government's plans to increase the number of people admitted to medical school each year. Our correspondent, Jean McKenzie, has sent us, um, has sent us an update, but also she joins us live from Seoul. Jean, um, so what is the situation now with these doctors? Because it's, it's very difficult. On the one hand, uh, there is a lack of supply. On the other hand, there is resistance from doctors concerning more doctors being brought in, onto the payroll. Yeah, look, it is a slightly unusual one because the doctors here are saying that they're overworked, they're underpaid, and so therefore you wouldn't expect them necessarily to be protesting at the idea of more doctors being added into the system. But how it works here is that healthcare is heavily privatised and doctors work for profit, they get paid per procedure. So they don't like the idea of more medical doctors coming into the system because they think that that would just mean more competition for the work that they are carrying out and so they would see their wages reduced. The government, on the other hand, and is arguing that South Korea desperately needs more doctors because the population here is aging and you're already seeing shortages of care, so particularly in rural areas or in emergency care. But the doctors say that just putting more doctors into the system wouldn't necessarily address these shortages because what you have is doctors sort of flooding into the areas that are more lucrative, for example, cosmetic surgery. So just adding more doctors doesn't mean that you're going to be able to plug those gaps, just the areas that are already competitive are going to be made more competitive. So that's the sort of two opposing arguments that you really have at the moment playing out between the government and these junior doctors who make up a large proportion of the staff at the big teaching university hospitals here. So they feel that they're bearing the brunt of a system which they say is broken and that's what's leading them to be overworked and underpaid. How sympathetic is the public? Not particularly sympathetic. I mean, generally, the, the people here, they, they want to see more doctors. You know, people, particularly in rural areas, they're the ones that are not being able to see their physicians. And so it's very hard to argue to the public that, that more doctors is a bad thing. It's just an argument that doesn't really make, more, make much sense to people. And I think that's what's been one of the doctors' problems really here, is trying to get the public on side. And this is what's given the government actually the upper hand in all this, because there isn't much incentive for the government to compromise here when they know they've got support of the public. Well, indeed. So where is this heading? At the moment, the government is saying that they stand ready to remove medical licences. That's a very dramatic step. It is, and they're saying essentially if the doctors don't come back to work today, they're going to start taking action. But we're not actually going to see this play out until Monday because tomorrow is a public holiday here. So they've given them to the end of the day and then on Monday they will assess who returned to work and who didn't. Now, of course, yes, they're using this as a tool to try and force the doctors back. Some people are arguing, you know, would they really remove the medical licenses of 9,000 striking doctors? If the ultimate goal is to get the doctors back to work, that would seem pretty counterintuitive. But at the same time, if they think the doctors aren't going to get back to work, then they might feel like they don't have very much to lose here. And as we've said, because the public is on the government side generally with this, there is very little incentive for them to compromise. Jean, thank you very much indeed.